in this video we are going to be diving into the electrician's favourites on what to use when breaking into a ring final circuit and extending it to additional sockets. That's right, the topic of maintenance free, crimps under the floorboards and can I bury a junction box are all questions we Sparkies get asked all too often. Now you may have seen me in my previous video using the quick wire two way and four way junction box to extend the ring final and spurring off it as well. And I said that this junction box is rated at 24 amp. So is it okay that the junction box is rated less than the rating of the protective device? Well, let's first quickly look at what a ring final is first. A ring final according to table H2.1 in the on-site guide serves 100 square meters off a 30 or 32 amp protective device using a 2.5 millimeter cable but there is a little bit more to it than that let's drop into a drawing so a ring final starts at the consumer unit and goes to each socket and comes back to the board with the idea being we can supply a higher current as we have doubled the cross-sectional area of the cable but rings need to be carefully designed to share the load equally across the whole ring. For example, if we have a high load on this socket here, then the current will be in this section of the cable and not on this section of the cable. And no matter how well we design a ring final, we can never guarantee that the loads are going to be shared equally because, well, we just don't know what the customer's going to plug in. So surely there's some clarity around this. Well, there is. Regulation 433.1.204 says, and I will break this down, accessory supplied to BS1363 may be supplied through a ring final circuit protected by a 30 or 32 amp protective device and be wired with copper conductors of 2.5 millimeter squared. But the really important bit such circuits are deemed to meet the requirements of regulation 433.1.1 if the current carrying capacity of the cable is not less than 20 amp and if under the intended conditions of use the load current in any part is unlikely to exceed for long periods the current carrying capacity of the cable. So sticking with the on-site guide and looking in appendix F, table F6, we can see that a 2.5 millimeter flat cable is rated to 21 amps and yes I know we have reference methods but we can pick those up in another video. So as long as the cable does not exceed that for a long period then it's all good. So a 24 amp rating on this quick wire is fine. In the video I also spurred off the ring final to go to an additional socket and I used the four way splitter to do this. But the question was asked why four ways? Is there not a danger here of creating a ring within a ring or coming off the same point with two cables to two separate sockets? Well, that is a great question and has been a focus of debate even back in the day when Gary was fishing under floorboards. So can you? Well, you could create a ring within a ring, but as competent people, we know better. And equally, you could do that from any point in the ring final. We just need to plan and assess our installations carefully. But the question as to whether you can come off the same point to two sockets is interesting. We can take a spur off any point in the ring and break into it anywhere, meaning we could technically break into the ring for one spur, then go a matter of millimetres away and break into it again for the next spur. And the regulations support this, with Appendix 15 and BS7671 saying that for ring and radial circuits, an unfused spur should feed one single or one twin socket only. So this mock-up I've done here would be okay with two junction boxes, which I have broken into the ring, linked together, then going off to the spurred sockets. Oh, and before you keyboard warriors get at me, yes, I know these aren't maintenance free. It's for illustrative purposes only. So if we have a look at the way the quick wire is actually constructed, we can see that what we have is two junction boxes either side with an internal connection linking them, very much like my junction box mock-up. So as long as my ring or radial enter either side, I can take two spurred points from this one unit, just like I have done on my setup here. 
and all of this in a tiny unit. But as always, be sure to let us know what you think about two spurs off a single point and extending rings, radials and spurs. And also if you fitted the Quickwire 24 amp splitter on your installs and have been impressed with them like me. And if you've missed my installation of the Quickwire splitter, then be sure to click the video right here.